text line. Luke Johnson joins us right now, co-host of the Super Talk Eagle Hour on the Farm Bureau phone line. Check out favorites.com and go with the home team, Mississippi Farm Bureau. Luke, you woke up this morning and Southern Miss was the Hattiesburg Regional Champion and they are hosting a Super Regional. It's something that we've been talking about since, what, mid-April? And it has uh, it has all come to pass. And they're hosting a Super Regional without being a top eight seed. So the result ultimately is uh, is what people had hoped for all along. It worked out. And what's really ironic about this, uh, I mean, you're playing Ole Miss, but you're saluting Ole Miss because you're hosting the Super Regional. That's what's really funny about it. I mean, Ole Miss, you know, allowed you to be able to put in this situation. And just talking to people and, and uh, you know, we were talking off uh, off air, how in the world did we arrive here? You know, um, the NCAA putting Ole Miss in as one of the last teams, sticking them in in Coral Gables, and we all talked about it. I mean, so many options out of this with uh, Jay Johnson against Arizona or, you know, Bianco uh, against Barry, and here we are. But, I mean, to, to sum up this weekend, right at 26,000 people were at the Pete. Uh, an LSU fan um, said over the weekend, he said, I've been to a lot of these regionals. This is probably one of the best atmospheres I've ever been in. And to see Southern Miss, you know, dogpile yesterday and then run out to the Rowdy Roost and climb the wall. I mean, it was uh, it was just the, the culmination of a of a roller coaster season that you thought you're on top of the world. And then you get a gut punch because because Saturday night, guys, in a lot of ways was what Southern Miss got hit with after that 15 minute, you know, 15 win uh, streak. They had to bounce back and. I mean, they won three games in less than 27 hours. It was pretty remarkable. Yeah, and I mean, I, we were talking about that kind of to begin the show today. When you look at the route, okay, you, you beat Army, and th- then you lose a game, right? You you lose to LSU, and you're trailing Kennesaw State. Pretty good Kennesaw State team that I'm not sure gets its due. And, and because there were three games between Southern Miss and LSU, you forget how hard that game was against Kennesaw State. But come from behind, win it in extra innings. And then to beat LSU twice with the stakes as high as they were, it says just so much about this Southern Miss baseball team. Yeah, kind of throughout the year, Southern Miss fans kind of been frustrated with this team at times. Like, for instance, the second Ole Miss game, you know, uh, they just, Southern Miss just kind of looked dead the whole game. Scott said, you know, we're swinging at pillows. And there's been times that it seemed like, you know, Southern Miss fans accused this team of being apathetic or, or not caring. And I think what we saw over the weekend, is that they don't panic. And so sometimes what some people might call a lack of energy is is really almost a quiet confidence that they never think they're out of a fight. And, you know, to do what they did on on Sunday, and before you even talk about the storm performance, I mean, Hunter Riggins gave you 117 pitches in nine innings. I mean, it was absolutely phenomenal. On that turf, it was 100-plus degrees. And, uh, and you get the win in extra innings. And they didn't push that second game back at all. That, that first game was uh, four and a half hours or, or so, maybe a little longer. And they had a quick turnaround and come back and beat LSU. I mean, it was, it was just pretty, pretty remarkable. And, and so much so, I think I heard you guys talking earlier, but, but the, the, the Southern Miss fan base, I mean, you know, they, they were pretty good during the week, like boxing LSU out from, from being in the stadium. But there were still a lot of purple and gold. And, Every time LSU tried to get something going in the stands, Southern Miss, you know, shouted them down. And I don't know if you guys saw when the reliever came in for LSU that we all thought he was balking. But but Southern Miss kind of created their own cheer. Every time he would hit his front foot down, they would start counting how many times he did it. And uh, rattled him pretty good. He threw a wild pitch, and Southern Miss took the lead. So... I'm painting with a broad brush here, right? Because we know that when you do that, there are... um, there are exceptions to the rule. Like, you and I get along. I think the world is Scott Berry. Scott Berry and Mike Bianco get along. But there are a lot of people that would say, generally speaking, Southern Miss fans have a bit of a disdain for Ole Miss. Ole Miss fans, whatever. I, again, we all live in the same state. A lot of it's in fun. The, the only reason I bring that up is because of I think that is in contrast to the way that these two baseball programs – coaches and players view each other I, I, kind of based on what we've seen for a lot of years we know there's a ton of respect between mike bianco and scott barry and i feel like ole miss and southern miss have played some really good competitive close games and they're not chippy games they just go out and play baseball when they're playing against each other 
Yeah, I think it's a sport-related deal. I mean, because football dominates, and these two teams haven't played, uh, you know, football since 1984. That is what, you know, sticks in Southern Miss's crawl, you know, regarding that. That's a whole other conversation. But, I mean, with baseball, what you have is an Ole Miss coach that for the last 20 years respects the product in Hattiesburg. And Southern Miss baseball at the same time tips their cap to what he's done in Oxford. And so I, I think that it, it's been Bianco's approach with, um, you know, what Barry's done in Hattiesburg and what Corky Palmer did in Hattiesburg for Barry. And I think that's why there's a little less edge. Let me just tell you this. After what Southern Miss fans dealt with LSU fans this weekend, I'm not sure they're going to say that much bad about anybody else in this state because LSU, it was terrible. I mean, it was what, what man, USM security was finding LSU fans like jumping the fences and, I mean, it was just crazy. So uh, I think a lot of it is, as you said, there's a mutual respect that's been shown from Oxford to Hattiesburg and Hattiesburg back to Oxford in baseball. Yeah. What's the ticket situation going to be? I mean, we we, under, we know that kind of like it was this weekend, it's going to be capped at about 5,500. Obviously, Southern Miss is going to buy every ticket that they possibly can. We had somebody that sent us a message that said, you know, would love to get a ticket for this game, preferably for less than the $300 or so that they're showing on the secondary market. There will be more Ole Miss fans than there were LSU fans simply because the visiting team gets more tickets in a super regional than you do in a regional setting. What's it going to look like? So some of the stuff that I've seen, I think the, in the regional, was, you said it last week, I think it's 200 allotted tickets. I saw 300 allotted today. Um, what Southern Miss did is they're actually going to reserve not only the chairbacks, but they're going to reserve the uh, the general admission like bleacher seating as well. And so they've divided kind of those up and then in a standing room only. So basically, if you are an Eagle Club member at a certain level, you can request tickets. Doesn't mean you you get them, um, mm-hmm. but I mean, uh, so they're going to take care of season ticket holders. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure of that, and then. They're going to, you know, allow other people to to put in requests, and I think they'll they'll prioritize that. But I mean, if if you're an Ole Miss fan, like like Southern Miss is going to play basketball, they're going to block you out in the paint. Like it's going to be really tough, you know, to, to get tickets. I mean, that's just there's going to be a lot of Southern Miss fans that don't get to watch it, you know, this weekend. Yeah. So if you're if you're a casual fan that really hasn't watched Southern Miss this year, and you just kind of want to, you know, come watch a super regional game. Probably not happened. Kind of been a little movement on social media today to maybe open up Reed Green or or uh, even The Rock and kind of show, you know, a broadcast uh, for fans that can't get in. So what? Uh, expect 5,500 or so and what? 45, 4,800 of those are probably Southern Miss fans? That, that yeah, seems I would think so. doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and because you're dealing in Mississippi, I think you're going to have some of these corporate sponsors, you know, banks sure. and such. I mean, yeah. you know, they got clientele that are, you know, from both schools. So, you know, Southern Miss is going to do whatever they can to retain the home field advantage. And hey, before I, – I got a little news I'd like to share. All right. you mind? Fire. On uh, – we've we got something to share with you. A very special Super Saturday edition of Sports Talk Mississippi – We'll hit the air live in Hattiesburg for the Hattiesburg Super Regional this coming Saturday. Starting at noon, Luke Johnson and I will be at Ed's Burger Joint on Hardy Street in Hattiesburg to get ready for one of the biggest moments in Mississippi college baseball history. It is presented by our friends at Polk's Meat. Our Food Friday just might extend into the weekend, and uh, it's going to be so much fun. So presented by our friends at Polk's Meat. Remember, no buts about it, folks. Picky people. Pick Polk's. Find uh, a grocer near you by going to polksmeat.com. You can catch this special Super Saturday broadcast anywhere you get Super Talk Mississippi, on your local station, online at supertalk.fm, and streaming at supertalktv.com. How much fun so is that going to be? what that means is, rather than having regional hot dogs this year, we'll have super regional shakes at Ed's. Captain Crunch shake for me, please. Krispy Kreme donut glazed shake for me, please. Mm. Mm. 
So, yeah, uh, if you are in Hattiesburg, we'd love to see you. That's going to be a great pregame party spot. I don't know if we'll be on the outside patio, if we will be inside. Regardless, it's a prime location right there on Hardy Street. There'll be plenty of uh, plenty of folks in and around, and we're going to have some fun with you. That'll be a two-and-a-half-hour edition of Sports Talk Mississippi Special Edition coming up on Saturday from noon until 2.30. That will take you right up to network coverage. Uh, we're gonna have plenty more time to uh, to break down the matchup this weekend, Luke. When uh, when Ole Miss rolls into Hattiesburg for a super regional against Southern Miss, sounds good. Look forward. To-